Hi everyone, today I'm going to be viewing DreamWorks Madagascar. So the movie takes place in the Central Park Zoo where four animals, Alex, Marty, Moment, and Gloria, a lion, zebra, giraffe, and hippo respectively, all live in. Marty wants something more, of course, to live in the wild. So he runs away to hope to get to Connecticut, but then after a misunderstanding, all the animals are shipped away and wash up on the islands of you guessed it, Madagascar. And here we wind up into some slightly familiar tropes. Characters seeming ferocious at first when there's a misunderstanding in the case of the lemurs, thinking that they can scare off the Fusa. Very similar to a Bug's Life situation, but not exactly. Luckily, this movie doesn't go into the infamous liar reveal trope because one, the animals don't really lie about being fierce. It's all a case of mistaken identity. And second, we get a more interesting side of things. Animated movies go in two directions usually for portraying wild animals. Either they portray it naturally and have predator-prey relationships, or similar to this, as well as Farming Wood, my last review, they have a sense of both friendship, kind of like how younger kids shows work for this, and the sense of nature to it as well, which is an interesting combination. And the highlight of the story is definitely Alex's slow descent into carnivorism and nearly eating his own friends. This is a surprisingly dark route for such a fun comedy to take that it's really interesting. Unfortunately, there are moments where it doesn't quite work out. The scene right after Alex has bitten Marty on the butt and has been ostracized by the lemurs and is being sent to live with the Fusa is filled with a bunch of slapstick that's really meant to show the hardships the characters are going through, but it feels like the movie is unable to be serious for even that amount of time, but at the same time they're trying to portray it as a serious situation, and it can't really work both ways, which isn't really a bad thing that they're making comedic. A lot of it is funny, but it doesn't always mesh well very well, but the comedy is still the highlight of the movie. These characters are so Indonesian seeing and funny and seeing them react to the world around them and all cope at different levels is really fun. So Madagascar does have some interesting ideas and the comedy might not quite come in at the right moments, but it's overall, it's a funny story with an interesting story that will definitely make it an enjoyable time. Now on to the animation. This is a fairly cartoonish movie for DreamWorks, and that works well to it. The comedic movements for the characters and designs really fit the funny tone of the movie and I feel that unlike other DreamWorks films that were early on in a way the cartoony elements really hold up better in the sense that they are trying for hyper realistic and not quite getting there. The humans similarly to Sh as they were in Shrek still look kind of off getting better but still not quite there yet. And then we have the settings, all of which are looking so much better than the previous films. And some great sequences, the Candyman scene of Alex hallucinating. Again, a surprising joke for any other anime studio, but by now DreamWorks was getting quite used to getting away with being far more blatant than Disney. And other CGI films really were trying to be groundbreakers around this time. 
because studios were really trying for their first films. But since DreamWorks was established and had successes like the Shrek first two Shrek movies and to a lesser extent Shark Tale under their belt, they were able to play around more. And I think this was one of the first CGI films that are continuing that really did work to its advantage. So the animation may not be breathtaking in any sense, but it definitely fits the movie well. And finally, we have the characters. Alex is the character that is <laughs> taking the whole move into the wild the worst. He loves his pampered life and is a performing animal that actually enjoys what he does, which, while maybe not totally realistic, is more interesting and different than the typical way circus animals are portrayed or zoo animals which really works for the film because if an animal is really bred in captivity they don't really know much else so they aren't going to view it the way a other prison would seem to a human or an animal that was captured beforehand so Alex really does show a sense of longing for familiarity, but at the same time, when his instincts kick in, he's really worried of hurting his friends, as well as finding his way home. So, he's the most relatable character in the movie, being in a situation that he doesn't quite know how to deal with the changes, but he also really cares deeply for his friends. Then we have Marty, who is the polar opposite of his best friend, Alex, and really is excited at the idea of leaving, and he doesn't think things through really at first. And he does have moments where he's a little insensitive to the other three, when he's really enjoying himself in the wild, he doesn't quite grasp that they're not or see it as his own fault. But by the end, we see that he's really accepted some responsibility for it and that he does have his heart in the right place. And of course, we, the voice performances of Ben Stiller for Alex and Chris Rock for Marty really do bring some humor and heart to them. Gloria is a sort of mother figure to the other animals, in a sense, but she's also very stern, as well as protective and caring. So, that, like I said, a nice mother figure, but it's really in the sequels that she gets more development. Same goes for Melman. But his neuroticism from the very first movie is something I really loved because I could be that way myself and a real hypochondriac. <laughs> and his Rory Wart nature is a lot of fun to watch. And it's nice to see he grew a little bit. He still is nervous at the end of the other movies. But... That's not really something you get deal with overnight, so I can really understand why the films would choose to do that. Then we have King Julian and Maurice and Mort are lemurs. Julian being a king that's clearly full of himself and not listening to what anybody has to say. Barely paying attention to anyone but himself being blatantly and bluntly honest in a sense of not knowing when he's offended someone <laughs> or he just doesn't care but he's also a really fun character of Barney's and does have some good lines all hail the New York Giants <laughs> he, is, he is pretty funny there and Maurice being a naysayer who is wary of Alex because of his, well, background. And then Moore is just an adorable little lemur that 
adores King Julian's feet, which King Julian finds the most annoying thing ever. Then we have the penguins, everyone's favorite characters from these films, and yeah, I can see why. Whether you like the cutest one, Private, the leader, Skipper, the smarter one, Gwalski, or our demolitions expert and silent type, Rico, you definitely can find one of these characters pretty funny and they all have plenty of charm to them. They must because they had their own TV series and spin-off movie and for good reason, really. <laughs> They're like spies and it's just a brilliant concept that really make the movie and the fact that they're really the ones that set it up so yeah they're definitely the best part so Madagascar is a movie that knows exactly what it is it does have an interesting story but its primary focus is comedy and as that it really works cartoon animation fun characters and plenty of good gags make this a definite must-see for DreamWorks fans. Thank you for watching this crack a lacking movie review, if I do say so myself, and leave an anime from the to um leave an anime from the comment section below. And you like to please tell me somebody at least said move it. Bye.